Today we're trying out a very powerful plugin called Dehancer, which will allow you to get your digital photos to look just like film. I don't need to tell you how iconic film is. You already know that. If you're here, you already understand how influential and desired film is and will always be. But I actually have never shot film. Well, besides from taking photos at like eight years old with the family camera, but I've never really purchased my own film camera. I shoot everything digitally, but I've always sought out that film look. Digital cameras, as great as they are, they don't really produce that feeling that film cameras do. Of course, you can edit your images to go any direction you want it to get, but out the gate, they don't have that essence that film does. But with programs like Dehancer, I'm able to get the best of both worlds. All right, let's just get into it and play around with some photos. So I'm using Dehancer and Lightroom Classic. And once I have Dehancer downloaded, I will, I'm gonna use their custom adjustments that they recommended before opening the plugin, which is, oops, which is exposure minus one, contrast minus 40, and then blacks 60. So, these are just some adjustments that Dehancer recommend that I use before I open it in the plugin. But you can do a lot of different things to get the desired results. So first things first, I'm just gonna edit the photo um, in Dehancer Lightroom by right clicking it and hit edit. And then I'm gonna create a copy with Lightroom adjustments and then it is going to open up the plugin. So, what I love about this interface is that it's really simple and I love simplicity, especially with being able to see all the film profiles. I can see just like, let me bring my exposure up just a little bit so you can see this better. I can see all these profiles on the left hand side and I have like examples, like previews of them, you know? And I like when I can see it before I click on it, it just helps a lot of guesswork. So I can see which direction the colors are going. Yeah, you have like 63 different film stocks in here. And if you hit presets, you can save the work that you did so you can apply it to another photo. Unfortunately, with Dehancer, you can't batch edit a ton of photos, which is the beauty of using Lightroom. So, you know, I'm gonna edit one photo that I like from this set and then I will apply those same settings to another photo with the same scene and lighting scenario. So it is kind of a slower process than batch editing in Lightroom and applying it to all your photos at once. So up here you have this gear that allows you to update your film profiles. Again, they have like 63 out right now at the time of recording this. And if they release any more, you can just update your list and you have even more film stocks. You can reset all your settings. You can undo what you did. You can check out your waveform here. You can uh, zoom in you can also just double click and look around and preview you can see your original edit and the edits that you apply i uh, set up this shoot with my friend and he had some flared pants he had the afro out the jacket and he was just like perfect for this film shoot that we wanted to try and i just being able to see that story kind of come to life by clicking on these uh, film stocks is, is really nice. But on the right side, you have all of these different settings that allow you to further customize what you're looking at. It's really powerful. It reminds me of like opening Lightroom or Photoshop for the first time and seeing so much to do and not knowing what I should do, honestly. But you know, you don't have to be a master at everything and every single program, just more so applying the um, tools that you actually need for what you're trying to do. You have source, you have film developer, film compression, expand, print, color head, you have film grain, of course, your halation, and then your bloom, and then your vignetting. So when I think of film, I think of the colors and the feeling and the nostalgia, obviously. But breaking it down, there's a couple things that really bring film to life. And that's halation, bloom, and that beautiful film grain. I'm just gonna go straight to 
um, my film grain. I'm gonna select my grain. And the cool thing about Dehancer's film grain is that it's not just an easy slider where you just add large grain, small grain, more grain, less grain. It does that obviously, but you have control over where the grain appears in your image. Like I can take control of the midtones on his face and I can bring the grain down, but I still see more grain in the highlights or I can really adjust the grain in the, the shadows and make that cleaner or make it a little more grittier. And it just separates the grain. And I think that's really cool to play around with. I like subtlety, so sometimes I'll maybe wanna push my grain to like 10 or 11, or, you know, depending on the image, I'll bring it up further, but you can just see how that's looking. I keep it at negative, um, positive looks a little more uh, pulled back, but negative feels way more, um, way heavier, which I do enjoy, honestly. And then you have Halation, uh, which is a tool I like to use, and they have a mass mode, which allows you to kind of see where it's appearing. So halation, I'll just bring it like all the way up for those who don't know what halation is or how that affects your image. Look at all this like red outline that's everywhere. Obviously this is overkill, but it creates a really cool bloom in certain parts of your images. Like look at his afro, there's like this red highlight and his jewelry and the light reflecting on the table. Um, so I'm going to basically Again, with everything, just make things a little more subtle. And, you know, think about what I like to see. I like the pop of Halation, like on his ring, the table, and a little bit on his afro. So if I just do bring my global diffusion up just a little bit. But that already has such a beautiful look and feel to it. Next we have Bloom, and Bloom is a really beautiful, misty uh, burst of highlights, and it looks, it looks really nice. It definitely brings uh, another layer to your image that it continues to break down that digital raw shot. And you can control this as well with, you know, how much Bloom you're having in your highlights. Um, and then you can also do the mass mode and see where it's going and where it's appearing in, in your image. So I think that's nice. I, oh wow, that's pretty crazy. I, I, that was actually an accident, but depending on the photo, you may want less or you may want more. And then you have vignetting, which I like for this image because I'm trying to lead you towards the center of the frame by frame framing him between two people and then you have a um, option called print and this really brings film uh, style to life because this emulates what it would be like if you printed your image on photographic paper and you can do glossy paper you can do a Kodak print film like that you can do a Fuji print film and it gives you a lot of uh, like texture to it. I really like glossy paper. I feel like I probably always go back to glossy paper, but I just gotta go back and forth. Actually, that looks pretty nice, honestly. I really like that. It has more blues to it. Uh, my, my, sorry, my film was looking a little too, too heavy right now. So I'm gonna bring that back and I'm also gonna scale back my, my bloom a little bit. Um, let's see what this, yeah, there we go. It's a little stronger if I take the diffusion out. You can see how it's like, yeah, I like that. I like that. And then for color, I can go up to um, color head and make some adjustments. I wanna see what bringing more blues in this does for me. 
It's pretty nice. That's kind of cool. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> I really like this. Look at that. From here to here. Okay, now my bloom looks a little kind of overkill, but <laughs> I think it's the bloom. I'm trying to see what, um, if I toggle things on and off. Yeah, my bloom is going crazy. Um, I can just kind of see what my impact is for everything. Playing with these sliders is really fun. Creating unique looks that are all in the process of real film and being able to take control of that with this plugin. All right, I'm gonna hit okay. And then it's gonna go right into Lightroom. And now I'm ready to export this out. Uh, let's try another image, why not? Let's try, let's try this image right here where he is sitting on this beautiful couch in this gorgeous hotel in downtown LA. Again, you can only do one by one. I'm going to reset all settings. The first thing I'm gonna do is bring up my compensation so I can see my image better while I'm editing. And there is a film stock that I really wanna do this one this one looks really nice I love the way it's processing these colors in this scene it feels right it feels like a movie scene and I'm digging it so he is pretty underexposed so what I probably should have done in Lightroom was select him out and kind of open it up a little more but that's good for me. Film compression will crunch my highlights a little bit, soften them up, which I do like using sometimes. And then my white point and black point controls are here. So that's too dark. I'm gonna bring it up a little bit and then bring this over a little bit. Yeah, that's pretty smooth. I like that. I really like this. And now we haven't even touched our film. So let's add some film. Boom. I love just being able to see my work look the way I want it to look. And that can be really hard with editing sometimes. I'm 10 years into photography now and I've never really been the one to edit everything from scratch. I love using presets, I love using plugins to help me get my work to where it needs to be. It helps me stay in the zone, it helps me stay creative. More power to everyone that can just change the sliders and get the image that they want in their head, but I really need plugins and presets. So this is really fun uh, for me specifically. I'm probably gonna keep this around like 15. That feels good. And then again, I can control the shadows and the mid-tones of my uh, grain. I can control the size. That's about eight. That's about nine, actually. I like that. And then my halation. So you can see it popping on his nose, on these rails and the lights in the back. Like, that looks cool. It's already reminding me of certain old school films and seeing this halation in the shot and really being able to take control of all the elements of film and customize it is, is really fun, honestly. And again, having control over it. Like when you, when you shoot on film, like that's the shot. Like, you're not really taking it further. And, th and that is the beauty of film, you know, because these imperfections and these uh, characteristics are baked in. But here I'm able to really play around with it and see what I like. It's nice, and let's see my before and after. Before, after, before, after. That looks really nice. I am honestly having a lot of fun with this program. I am excited to see how I incorporate it in my workflow. I really encourage you to really try 
to create something new. Yes, you have a lot of great film profiles that you can use to replicate film stock, but there's a lot of control you have in this program to really create something different, really something that's unique to your look and to the style that you are creating. Yeah, don't just take my word for it. Uh, you can download for free, play around with it. But if you are already convinced, you can save some money and use my promo code and you'll be able to get the license for all the programs that I told you about, Photoshop, Affinity Photo, Lightroom Classic, and Capture One. And you'll be able to create film-like photos with your digital camera.